Am I the idiot? H for cutting ex-wife's vacation short with the kids after she took them to see my thief of a mother. I 40 am divorced my wife 37 f about 3 years ago. We have two awesome kids 6 f and 4 m, and I am so grateful to her for blessing me with them. We have 50-50 custody. Brief history. Quarantine hit us hard. I had started a new and stressful job in April of 2020. My ex suffers from BPD and original content PD. The lack for control and uncertainty at this time made her very difficult to live with. She was also postpartum at this time. I was getting calls two minutes after work asking where I was and constantly made to feel guilty for pursing any self-care, on her time. Days of the silent treatment was my norm. I called it emotional purgatory. She was a psalm at that time. I desperately tried to complete small tasks to lessen the load at home and put my dad hat on the second I walked through the door. I put the kids to bed, washed bottles, cleaned the kitchen etc. She was always focusing on what I didn't help with. I begged her to go talk to a therapist and see if medication might be appropriate. I did convince her to come to marriage counseling which we attempted for about 6 months. In those sessions, it became clear that my feelings weren't going to be heard or considered. I decided to just work on myself and my codependency. I began to work on self-esteem, setting boundaries and not questioning my reality and my feelings. The healthier I got, seemingly the worse she got, which might sound strange to some. The night it all came undone I was watching a playoff game outside on the patio. It was a Tuesday night. I had told her in advance that the game was important to me. I got the kids down and began watching the game. She came outside and asked if I could help her pick up around the house. We had someone coming to help with cleaning on Friday so she wanted to tidy up. I told her, I can't help tonight because I'm watching the game, but I could help tomorrow. She slammed the patio door, came back out while the game was in OT and unplugged the TV. I walked out of the house and finished the game on my phone. After that she asked me to go to a hotel and locked me out of the house. When I asked to come back she told me to get an apartment, which I did. A week later, she begged me to come back. I said okay but under the advice of my therapist, I was going to keep my apartment in case she changed her mind. Over the next month she became obsessed with me breaking my lease. Eventually, I had a moment where I knew I was done trying. The divorce process was messy. She faked a pregnancy and tried to prevent me from getting 50-50. The truth came out and she caved eventually. At times I considered fighting for full custody but I know the kids love their mom and it would have broken her. If you made it this far, thank you for your patience. On to the present issue. Our decree states that we alternate spring breaks. The ex took the kids out of state the last two years. She asked me in February if she could take them again this year. I agreed because I didn't have plans, and I feel it's important that they see family. She told me she was driving, so I agreed to more time to allow them to safely travel. I made one request please do not take the children to see my mother. She has done this the last two times she traveled there. I don't talk to my mother because she stole 60k from my grandmother among other things and refused to even acknowledge her fault. I now care for my grandmother and moved her here. This morning my daughter informed me that they are flying, not driving and that ex has planned a visit with my mother and the kids. Since the divorce, there has been a very consistent pattern of her intentionally disregarding simple and reasonable requests, I'll spare you other examples. The point is I'm fed up. She is flying tomorrow. I asked her to change her flight and return the children to me by Wednesday at 5 p.m. This cuts her trip short three days, but follows the order. So I feel a bit guilty because I know the children will be disappointed. Logically and based off history, I know this is the only thing she responds to and I'm sick of being taken advantage of. What are your thoughts? I'm open to hearing that I'm being unreasonable if you feel that's the case. I desperately want to just do what's best for the kids, but this is often in conflict with enabling toxic behavior and her disregarding simple boundaries. Thank you for taking the time to read this, praying gesture, now for the comments. Commenter she told me she was driving so I agreed to more time to allow them to safely travel. I made one request please do not take the children to see my mother. This morning my daughter informed me that they are flying, not driving and that ex has planned a visit with my mother and the kids. Your ex lied to you about the details of the trip in order to get you to agree. This is a deal made under false pretenses. Not the idiot comment or not the idiot, she wanted to play games so you enforce the court order. Seems fine to me. But stop giving her these opportunities. Follow the court order. Stop giving her extra chances to cause issue, she doesn't deserve them and she has repeatedly shown you that she will trump your boundaries. So stick to the boundaries backed by the court order. Commenter you know this arrangement isn't sustainable, right? And damaging your children? This isn't about how much your kids love their mom. This is about helping them to be healthy, 
Happy humans. Who do you think is bearing the burden of your ex's BPD and original content PD now that you are not a full-time target? Why are you allowing her to travel alone with your kids? What happens if she goes off the rails in the middle of a strange airport with your kids in tow? Why are you not demanding an exact schedule and frequent check-ins? It's great if you want to be kind and understanding with her. But don't be careless with your kids. You need to get her evaluated to be sure she is capable of caring for your kids. You need to be informed if she goes off her meds or if her meds change. You need to be sure she is keeping up with her mental health care. And you need to know where your kids are at all times. Talk to a lawyer to find out what you can legally do. One thing I would suggest to start is to take advantage of your right to phone the kids at any time. Your kids are young, but get the oldest one of those kids' phones that only calls you. Then call her, just to check in. Ask what she's doing and measure her mood. And start using a parenting app when you talk to your wife. You need to have records of each time she lies to you. Or tries to guilt or gaslight you. I think seeing how much she lies and manipulates you will make it harder to brush off. Stop extending her grace at the expense of your children. Comment or what was her response to your request to return them by Wednesday? You gave her more time based on lies she told you, so when you learned about the lies you withdrew the offer of additional time. Cause and effect. Be very clear with her on that. Hang in there. Original post or verbatim. You trusted me as a stay-at-home mom for years. You trusted me with the kids full-time after we separated. You trusted my mom to care for the kids for weeks and months the at a time while we worked. You've trusted my dad and sister with the care of the children. So I am trying to understand what your safety concern is regarding our kids? Because this actually feels unnecessary, unhinged and not in the best interest of the kids since they have been looking forward to family dinners, get together, Easter celebrations and birthdays. Comment or not the idiot. It's not weird, or even unusual, when you're in a toxic relationship, for one partner to go off the deep end when the other starts getting better. It happened to me too. I grew up with a mother with pretty severe mental illnesses. I know your kids love their mom, but that doesn't mean that they are in a healthy environment. The thing is, you've had a history of letting her run roughshod over you. Imagine how much easier it would be for her to do to your kids. You showed great fortitude in getting out, and getting 50-50 custody. Now is not the time to start slacking off. She's showing you clearly, that she's going to do as she pleases. Polish up your shiny backbone. Enforce that court order. Look into parenting apps, and start documenting everything Reddit is a goofy place, and I see some shitty replies here. Best of luck to you. Comment or browse to understand who you're leaving your kids with. My mother has BPD, it gets worse as your children grow and individuate. Leaving them in her care, as she's already demonstrating, may be in their worst interest. Update I posted in April seeking guidance on if I should attempt to enforce an order to cut my wife's vacation short. Long story short she has a long history of lying and manipulating situations to gain time and access to the kids. After processing all the comments, I realized while I may not be the ah, uh, I am the problem. It was my flexibility with my ex that was enabling and emboldening her behavior. Religiously sticking to the order has been my mantra ever since. I am grateful for the tough love in the comments which truly helped wake me up to the situation. Thank you again to all that contributed to the original post in the comments. I did ask my ex to return the children on my scheduled parenting day. I told her that because she had lied about her travel plans, I needed her to bring the kids back early. Her response was to tell me how full I was to do this to the children. The day came, I went to the pick spot and she didn't arrive. She refused to answer my calls and texted me screenshots of me agreeing to give her the extra time and more guilt about my behavior and weaponizing the children etc. I tried to contact my family law attorney, but he was on vacation. I set up an appointment with him and contacted local law enforcement. The police were not interested in my call. They told me it was a civil matter and that I needed to contact the court and judge that created the order. I felt a combination of anger and helplessness. If anyone has ever co-parented with someone with personality issues, you know exactly what feeling I am describing. I decided to take full responsibility for my role in the matter and use it moving forward. Since April, I have followed the order and respectfully denied all of her requests for extra time and ignored the subsequent pushback and guilt tripping that inevitably comes when she doesn't get what she wants. I felt the need to update as a cautionary tale to others that are co-parenting or considering leaving a partner with personality disorder s and high conflict behavior. This month, my ex informed me that she married someone from the military. I suspect she had an affair with this person during our marriage but this is really irrelevant to this post. She emailed me asking to relocate the children to a base literally across the country in a remote area where there are no direct flights and the travel time is over 10 hours. She has no family there and the move would take the kids from everything they know. 
She proposed a plan to make me the summer parent. I respectfully shared my concerns and said that she could absolutely move, but that she would have to become the summer and holiday parent. Two weeks later she filed a motion to relocate with the court. She hired an expensive law firm and stated in her motion that she was a victim of domestic violence, and that I was uninterested and uninvolved with the children and on several occasions I have surrendered my parenting time. She has weaponized my flexibility and genuine efforts to co-parent. I won't waste your time defending myself and will say that she never brought any DV up at any previous hearing, never any charges or police reports, and agreed to give me 50-50 parenting time. This, with the timing of her new marriage and the motion, speak volumes. At best our relationship was unhealthy and mutually toxic. The reality is that I was being abused, which is the reason I filed for divorce in the first place. At times, I felt have felt so scared, angry, and helpless. More so than any time in my life, and I have been to combat. It's not that I believe that she will be successful. Everyone I reach out to reassures me that this is a long shot. It's the mere possibility that I could lose the kids and that they would have to spend so much more time with someone who is so emotionally damaging. It's been a challenge to stay grounded. I am having nightmares and difficulty falling and staying asleep due to the anxiety. There is something so gut-wrenchingly cruel about having someone who abused you, accuse you of being the abuser. I am preparing in all the ways legally, psychically, and emotionally to fight for my children. I have a very strong case and will show the judge how loved and cared for the children are at dad's house. I will let my attorney try to communicate the issues with her behavior and subtly try to let the judge know who they are truly dealing with. I mostly wanted to express gratitude to all the Redditors and share this as a cautionary tale to help others. If you are considering leaving or are co-parenting with someone with a personality disorder please don't fall into the trap I did. Keep your boundaries in place, stick to the order, and document high conflict behaviors so that you are prepared to protect yourself and your children. If you believe in prayer, I would appreciate them in any form. I will update again after the trial. Some books that have been tremendously helpful and should be required reading in these situations whole again. Healing your heart and rediscovering your true self after toxic relationships and emotional abuse. Splitting, second edition protecting yourself while divorcing someone with borderline or narcissistic personality disorder. Letting go, the pathway to surrender. Now for the comments. Commenter don't subtly demonstrate anything to the judge. Work with your attorney to throw your wicked ex all the way under the bus. Has your ex ever used illicit substances? Has she ever cheated on her taxes? Has she done anything illegal that you can document and substantiate? Gather everything you can to torpedo her character and demonstrate her lack of fitness to parent. If she can be incarcerated, all the better. Also try to get dirt on her new husband. Establish that your kids would be unsafe living with him. There's absolutely no reason to try and salvage any sort of civil relationship with a psycho. You need to go scorched earth and bury her in court. Your ex is a bad person, and you don't cut bad people slack. Commenter honestly this is the exact situation I was in, my ex was exactly like your ex-wife. He would ask for extra time then when I let him because it's in my nature too to just try and keep peace and try and do best for our son. He would use it against me and weaponize our child. It's awful, he's threatened to take him and thankfully the courts always stopped him. I am the UK though so it's different than the USA. I hope you get it sorted and I understand the frustration you have. My son spoke up against his dad six months ago and now my ex sees he can't use our son anymore he hasn't even seen our child. They literally don't care about anyone but their selves. Good luck with it all original poster thank you for turning your trauma into helping others an opinion have is that most, if not all DV survivors are codependents. Books on this topic will be helpful to your clients. The five core symptoms of codependency align perfectly with the reasons people stay in DV situations. Working on these five things is the key to healing. Only a codependent, can partner with a personality disorder. Self-esteem, people with low self-esteem may seek external validation and have trouble asserting their needs and boundaries. They may also depend on others for a sense of value. Boundaries, codependent people may have trouble setting boundaries with others and protecting themselves. Identity, codependent people may have trouble owning and expressing their reality, feelings, and identifying who they are. Needs and wants, Codependent people may have trouble addressing their own adult needs and wants, which can lead to self-care difficulties. Moderation, codependent people may tend to act in extremes when dealing with these core issues. Commenter when you speak with lawyer ask them to use her mental instability, PPD, all of it. She is moving to a place with no support system. Also she has no clue what she is in for being a military spouse. If he deploys or has to do it she will be alone. How will she cope in those situations? 
The kids are a bit young to be able to verbalize and ask for help if she goes into a depression or become abusive. I am a SOM mom and my husband have been military for almost 20 years. Make it clear you are scared for your children when you cannot be in close contact to monitor how their mom is treating them. Commenter there is being cooperative and being a chump. Guess which one you are? Sorry for the tough love but now more than ever it's about the kids. Go after her new husband. Let them know that you suspect he was having an affair with her and he is complicit in the lies that was told to law enforcement and the courts about you. Let him know that your attorney will subpoena the hell out of his bank records and call to witness his superiors before a civilian court. Make his life hell. Whether or not this is possible, who cares? It's about causing discord in their relationship to get her to back off. Commander Guardian ad litem, for the children. Picked by the court, you split the cost. Update 2 case in Colorado. 50-50 custody we have filed a strong reply to her motion I have several letters of support and suitability I plan to make a calendar and highlight dad's days versus mom days, I have maybe granted her 20 extra days in 2 years I have built a photo book with 200 pictures of adventures and activities a note from Red Foxy Hey Fam since original poster has said he will update after he goes to court, I will mark this as ongoing.